Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Samantha Tadiram, a BSN nurse, and in this channel we share everything nursing, health, lifestyle, and clothes. Today we are discussing menstrual clothes, something that women, most women experience, but don't talk about. In this video, we are going to talk about menstrual clothes, what's normal and what is not normal, how they form, their causes, treatments, any complications, and when to visit the hospital. Whether you've started your menstruations or you already began your menses long time ago, it is very crucial for you to have knowledge about your body. So let's dive into it so that we can have more information about menstrual clothes to clear out any misunderstandings or confusion. But before we get started, do not forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. And if you find this video helpful, do not forget to share it to your friends and loved ones who may need the information. So what are menstrual clots? Menstrual clots are jelly-like clumps of blood and tissue that are shed from the uterus during menstruation. And these are normally dark red or brown and can vary in size. So can you tell what is normal or abnormal menstrual clot? Well, here are some of the things that you can look at as you are seeing which ones are normal or abnormal. Normal clots are the ones that every lady sees at the beginning of their period. I can say this because I'm a girl because I menstruate every month, so I know. Every month, the first one or two days, all of us see those small clots. It is caused because of the heavy bleeding. So that is normal. So the first thing is these clots are small in size and they are bright red or brown and they're normally occurring at the beginning of the period. If you're looking at the abnormal menstrual clots, first of all, these ones are going to be throughout your periods. So if you're bleeding for four or five days, you're going to have clots throughout. Mm -hmm. And these ones are also going to be bigger in size. This one calls for an alarm and you should consider going to the hospital for a checkup. Most ladies of childbearing age normally have menstrual cycles ranging between 21 to 35 days, which is absolutely normal. So the average is normally 28 days, but most women normally have from 21 to 35 days, which is all okay and now. The endometrium or the uterine lining will grow and thicken throughout every month because of the estrogen hormone. But if fertilization or pregnancy does not happen, other hormonal events are going to signify the uterine to shed. There are four menstruation. So the uterine lining, blood, mucus, and tissue are all going to be expelled from the uterus through the cervix and out through the vagina. So as the uterine lining sheds, it normally pulls at the bottom of the uterus, waiting for the cervix to contract and expel its contents. So to aid the breakdown of the thickened blood and tissue, the body normally produces anticoagulants. However, note that if the blood outpaces the body's ability to produce the anticoagulants, then the menstrual clots are the ones going to be formed and released. So you will notice that for ladies with normal menstrual flow, clots are normally at the beginning, that is the first or the second, that is the first and second day of your menstruations. And this is normally short-lived. However, the ladies with heavy menstrual flow, blood clotting formation is very, very common. This is normally prolonged. You also notice that these, these ladies change their pads and tampons every two hours or so, depending on how much blood you're losing. You'll also notice that these guys are losing a lot of blood so they will be tired they'll be fatigued they'll be dizzy they will prefer to be in bed all that centering around anemia for me menstrual clots are caused by various factors normally related to hormonal balance the volume of the menstrual flow and other underlying medical conditions number one we can talk about the heavy menstrual flow known as menorrhagia this is when a person has a heavy menstrual flow that is what menorrhagia is in a medical term and um, if a person has a heavy menstrual flow therefore the body's ability to produce anticoagulants is going to be lower anticoagulants normally are the ones that help to break down the material i'm talking about the blood the tissue the mucus and the uterine lining into a thin layer of flow of blood and so that it can pass freely into the cervix and out into the vagina but if the the blood outpaces the anticoagulants as i already mentioned above there is going to be formation of clots because the blood is going to be thick and when it is thick it's going to come out into jelly-like clubs and hence formation of clots 
Another point is the uterine obstruction. These ones interfere with the uterus's ability to contract. And if the uterus cannot contract, the blood is going to pull and coagulate inside the wall of the uterine cavity, hence the formation of clots. So conditions like endometriosis, adenomyosis, fibroids, something even cancerous tumors, put pressure on the uterine lining, leading to heavy menstrual flows and clot formation. Under the uterine obstructions, let us look at our first point, which are the fibroids. Fibroids are non-cancerous tumors that normally grow inside the menstrual wall. Apart from heavy menstrual flow, they also cause irregular bleeding, lower back pain, fertility issues. The cause is normally not known, but factors like age, obesity, genetics, hormones like estrogen and progesterone are normally linked to play a part in their development. Another point I can bring across is endometriosis. We have heard about endometriosis it's becoming a common um, condition in most ladies. However, diagnosis is also taking a long time. I do not know why, but this is becoming this is becoming a very common problem, and I think I'll make a video about it very very soon. So, endom endometriosis is a condition in which the endometrial lining grows outside of the uterus, but inside of the reproductive tract so you will experience very painful menstrual cramps you will experience pelvic pain you'll also have abnormal bleeding both with or without clots the exact cause of endometriosis is not known but it's known to be hereditary and hormones like estrogen are also known to play a very very important role in that development adenomyosis is a condition in which the uterine lining grows into the muscle wall of the uterus causing it to enlarge and thicken, making it grow two, or th two to three times its normal size. This is also another huge problem that women, some women are facing. In addition to that, we can also add the cancerous tumors. They are extremely rare, but tumors in the uterus and also in the cervix can cause heavy menstrual bleeding and by this point we know that if you have heavy menstrual bleeding you are at high chances of having menstrual clots so away from the uterine obstruction let us look into the hormonal imbalance hormonal imbalance we can look at the estrogen and the progesterone you know that these two hormones regulate the menstrual cycle so remember that for the uterine lining to grow and thicken every month you're going to need the balance of these two hormones, the estrogen and the progesterone. And an imbalance in any of them is going to make the uterine lining to thicken. And when the uterine lining thickens, we are going to have heavy bleeding. Heavy bleeding leads to the formation of the clots. So conditions like the polycystic ovary syndrome, stress, perimenopause, menopause, thyroid problems, infections, are all going to cause or are all going to contribute to hormonal imbalance let's talk about the miscarriage in early pregnancy when a miscarriage happens it will cause heavy bleeding and release of large chunks of clots most of these miscarriages even occur before someone knows that they're even pregnant so when a miscarriage occurs you will experience heavy bleeding cramping and Clotting. Use of the intrauterine devices, for example, the non hormonal ones like the copper IUDs, can also lead to heavy menstrual flow, hence, clot formation. There is also the blood clotting disorders, for example, the von Willebrand's disease. This one affects the blood's ability to clot properly. It is extremely rare. The von Willebrand's disease may be the cause of your heavy menstrual flow if this occurs regularly. If you easily get a cut or and you start bleeding, if, for example, your jaws easily bleed even with a simple br like tooth brushing, this could be a disorder. So consider going to the hospital for proper management and diagnosis. Are there complications when it comes to menstrual clots? Yes, they are. There are actually so many, but I'm going to touch on a few. Number one is anemia. When you have heavy menstrual bleeding accompanied with clots, you're going to have significant loss of blood leading to iron deficiency anemia normally you will see that these these ladies or women are fatigued they have short of breath they are dizzy they are staying in bed all the time 
and it's because of the heavy bleeding they're losing a lot of blood another point is severe pain conditions like endometriosis adenomyosis fibroids normally cause they normally cause severe menstrual pain interfering with the daily activities and life so for example ladies normally experience cramps during the first days extreme cramps and it affects your normal and it affects your normal activities some are mild some are moderate some are severe that need medication now imagine a person who has a condition like endometriosis these people have extreme pain i've had people call them drama queens i've had someone call them oh my god that girl is a drama queen every time she gets period she's in ex extreme pain you do not know what is causing that pain that person has so that is why sometimes i don't want to ever like underlook cramps i tell people like how long has it been where is it have you been exp do you experience it before even after your menstruation when do you, when when is the pain coming because sometimes they're not just normal cramps sometimes you're ignoring something that is deeper so i i always advise i always advise my friends i always advise people who approach me like after getting like how long it has been where where is it i've taken this is that's fair i always tell them just go to a gynecologist it doesn't take much for me to just go for a for a what for a visit to just go for a checkup I always tell people go for a checkup because you may be saving yourself much more than what you call cramps. Another complication is infertility. Conditions like endometriosis, fibroids, polyps can affect the reproductive organs, making it difficult for ladies to conceive or maintain a pregnancy. Infertility is real. It is caused by so many conditions, but endometriosis is one of them. I've seen it firsthand. And if you have extreme, extreme pain periodic pain do not just brush it under the rug oh we experience cramps oh girls experience cramps don't do that if it's extreme if it's starting before it's it, it is still going even after have it checked out so let us talk about the treatment of menstrual clothes number one is medications medications can be hormonal contraceptives hormonal contraceptives helps to inhibit the growth of the uterine lining so a progestin releasing intrauterine device and family planning help to reduce the heavy menstrual flow and this also helps to slow down the growth of the fibroids however there are women who do not want or cannot use hormones or hormonal contraceptive pills and these ones you can normally also use transamic acid it helps with the clotting factor then there is also anemia remember in our complications we talked about anemia so if the heavy menstrual bleeding has caused about anemia the iron supplements are normally prescribed for you another type of treatment you can talk about surgery this is in various types but we can start with dilatation and curettage d and c this is normally done when a person has had like a miscarriage or maybe child by so it depends sometimes they can be looking for the underlying cause of the heavy bleeding so it is done so d and c involves widening of the cervix and then the the uterine lining is normally scrapped off and it is normal and this is an outpatient procedure so it is done in an outpatient setting so if you may be admitted or or you come in in the morning you're not going to, to sleep there unless when there are other underlying conditions that we know about and we maybe think you should stay but it's done it's a it is an outpatient um, procedure they're going to work for you maybe you're going to rest and then you're going to go back home this normally gives you some relief for a few months as the lining thickens again because when it thickens again the same thing happens However, you have to know that if you have fibroids and are not responding to medication, surgery is required. But remember that the size and the location of the fibroids matter. If the growth or the fibroid growth is large, you're going to need a myomectomy. This is the surgical removal of the fibroids. But if the fibroid growths are small, normally a laparoscopy is done. Incision into the abdomen and recovery is normally faster. So some people may opt for their uteruses to be removed so that they can do away with all the problems, which is understandable. But you also you have to consider if that is the decision that you want. 
Have you had children? Do you want to have children? Do you have any plans of having any children? You have to make sure that this is what you want because if the uterus is removed, you're never going to have any kids again. There is nothing to carry your baby. So you will never have children again. So you have to make sure that this is what you want. You have to discuss with your healthcare provider who is doing the procedure on you so that both of you can agree that this is the best treatment for you at that moment. So an hysterectomy is done on you to remove your uterus. We can also talk about uterine artery embolization. This is the procedure done where the blood supply is cut off to the fibroids, so they shrink. Another type of treatment we can look at is lifestyle. It covers so many things. Number one is diet. What are you eating? Are you drinking enough water? Are you exercising? Then relaxation, doing yoga. There is also stress management. Love yourself first. I can never stress this enough. Love yourself first because there will never be another you. There will never be anyone who does things that you do. So first take care of yourself both mentally and physically then you can take care of the rest. Then you can take care of everyone else. But I always tell people, take care of yourself first. If your clothes are large in size, bigger than a quarter, please go to the hospital immediately. If you're changing your tampon two hours or several times a day, please go to the hospital immediately. If there is irregular bleeding or spotting between your periods, if you're experiencing extreme pain during your period, and if your periods are going for more than seven days, you're losing a lot of blood, please visit the hospital immediately. So if you like this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel to grow. Comment in the comment section if you love to talk to me or ask me anything. And then don't forget to share the video to anyone who may need the information. Until next time, I will see you in my next.